It's Saturday night. That means it's time for the Don Tony Show. The wait all week long is finally over. Get Don Tony's perspective on current affairs in the world of pro wrestling and much more. The Don Tony Show. And now your host, the man, the legend, Don Tony. All right, let's do it. Hope everybody's having a great weekend. It is Saturday night, which only means one show. The Don Tony Show, April 9th, 2022. I tell you, what a difference compared to a week ago. WrestleMania 38, NXT, Ring of Honor, all the promotions doing their thing. Oh, we got some interesting stuff to get into. I want to thank you all for joining me. Whether you're here live with me tonight or on the replay, a big shout out to everybody who is new to the channel. Um, it's amazing, even after doing this for about two years with video, that uh, a lot of my old uh, podcasts and hotline um, friends never knew that this channel existed. So... We have a few things to get into, and I gotta. I, I didn't want to open up with this, but I, I just want to show you why I always, since 1997, always went with the moniker, I don't want to be first, I want to be right. And, you know, you, especially after what went down with Gunther, you know, originally WWE was going to change Walter's name to Gunther Stark. And I know how they come up with these names. They go on these websites that will post hundreds of popular German names. They want to do a German like storyline for Gunther, originally for both members of Imperium, but now they have Marcel Barthel, the only one aligned to Gunther. And yeah, somebody did not do their diligence and uh, pulled the name Gunther Stark from a website, not realizing the Nazi background to it. Give props to WWE. They fixed it and we move on. Last night, Gunther, as we talked about Thursday, made his SmackDown debut. He debuted with Marcel Barthel, and, you know, I'm hosting the watch party yesterday, and I'm on Twitter. Much love, Casey Israel. Happy anniversary with my friend. But, uh, you know, yesterday I'm hosting the SmackDown watch party, and in the midst of this, I'm getting swamped with DMs, twi uh, twi uh, twits, tweets, uh, a couple of emails, even in the chat room. DT, what do you think about WWE screwing up again with a Nazi name? And you go to my Twitter because that's the one that is public right now. You go to my Twitter and you'll see last night, you know, I didn't understand what the uproar was. So I go on social media and I said, look, people in their underoos, once again, bitching about a name change. Because yesterday on SmackDown, Marcel Barthel is now known as Ludwig Kaiser. I like Ludwig better than Marcel Barthel. That almost sounds like a name from a Nickelodeon show. What's your name, kid? I'm Marcel Barthel. Well, I'm Frank Tank. And I'm Frank Skank. I never liked Marcel Barthel. So they change it to Ludwig Kaiser. Big deal. What Go on my Twitter feed. What did I say yesterday? I'd rather have subpar names, but them being pushed well, than to have awesome sounding names and they get pushed like shit. Uh, hence the Viking Raiders. Remember that? Early on, oh, I didn't have the Viking Raiders. You know what? I don't give a shit about the name the Viking Raiders as long as they use the right way. Do you feel the Viking Raiders have been used to their potential? What if they had an amazing name? What does that do? So I get two people in particular on Twitter yesterday saying to me, DT, 
how, how could you defend WWE on this? Again, with a Nazi name. So one person, I don't want to name his name because I don't want to have any heat drawn to him, but he says to me, he goes, have you Googled Ludwig, Ludwig Klaus? I Googled it. I see Klaus Ludwig, some race car driver from Germany, 72 years old. The response publicly, no, DT, you're not doing it the right way. You got to go on Google and type in Ludwig Klaus, Nazi. Okay. I type it. I see some Nazi from, I think, 1935. And unfortunately, during that era, <laughs> majority were Nazis. It doesn't justify it, but I'm like, hey, look, I mean, I don't know if there's anything nefarious here with WWE. You know, I typed in, and you could go on there right now, type in Ludwig Klaus, and all you will see is a 72-year-old, or maybe he was 72 and he's now dead, a German race car driver. But because they didn't write the word Nazi, I'm sure if you have a rather generic American name, I'm sure if you put your name in there and you add the word molester, murderer, bank robber, fraud, I'm sure you're going to find people. Well, you're now, obviously, what happened with Hitler and Nazi is a trillion times worse than any of the crimes I just mentioned. But the thing is, ET, you didn't look the right way. You got to look at Nazi. So I said, look, man, I don't, I can't just jump the gun and say that WWE did anything nefarious. Do you know those two people unfollowed me? Which I don't care. I mean, you should know that by now, but I'm like, are you kidding me? Like, I'm not defending WWE, but why are they, like, why are these people getting angry about it? So anyway, we fast forward to today. I think some of you know where I'm going with this. We fast forward to today, and I'm preparing for the show. And um, I go and I get the SmackDown results and I see Ludwig Kaiser, not Ludwig Klaus. Wait a minute, did I miss something here? As we're watching SmackDown yesterday and Gunther is beating the shit out of Joe Alonzo. Joe Alonzo? Wait, am I thinking of the, the Mets player? Yeah, no, Joe Alonzo. The name was Ludwig Kaiser. Not Ludwig, uh, Klaus. WWE never went with Klaus. So I'm like, hold on a minute. These people were having me Google yesterday a name that WWE ended up not going with. So now, you know, you know me, I don't contact certain people unless I really want a good answer with something. So I'm like, all right, I send a DM. I originally asked social media to give me the answer. And unfortunately, what I realized on Twitter, and I've told you before, how do you like when you ask a particular person a question and they respond to you with liking your question? They don't answer it. But then you realize, they didn't even read my question. They just like, 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 like. Did that ever happen to you? You ask someone a question and they don't answer it. They just hit the like button. Like, so that's what I did tonight. I said, did I miss something here? And nobody gave me an answer, so I went and I got it myself. Well, check out what I found. And I want to thank a specific person for getting me the answers quickly because he knew I was doing the show at 8 o'clock tonight. WWE originally had four, four names proposed for Marcel Barthel. One of those names was Klaus. When WWE did a little bit of further research and found that there was someone because Klaus is a rather popular name. And in the thirties, when you had Nazis everywhere in Germany, somebody was going to be named Klaus, just like there's a good chance. Some Italian person in the mafia might've been named Tony. Once WWE realized that, Hey, there is a guy by the name of Ludwig Klaus. Eh, maybe we shouldn't go with it. And they didn't. What these websites didn't do yesterday is they didn't tell you Ludwig Klein, Ludwig Klauster, Ludwig Kaiser, 
spelled differently than what you saw on TV yesterday, K-E-Y-S-E-R and Ludwig Kaiser. Those were the four names that WWE was considering for Marcel Barthel. What those websites did yesterday was they took the one out of the four and they posted that online, even though WWE never went with it, to cause controversy, to cause attention. And WWE did the right thing, caught it, never made it public, and went with Kaiser, which was a safe name. And that's what happened yesterday. This is why I don't socialize with a lot of people online. Having me, you know, like, look up a name that WWE never went with. And those sites only chose to tell you the one that was the controversial one. Never gave you the names of the others that were not. All right, so there is the deal. There is the controversy yesterday with Gunther and Ludwig Kaiser making their SmackDown debut. Must have been a kind of boring yes day yesterday. Or maybe they wanted to divert the topic of Tony Khan versus the AEW bots. Yes, everybody. I know I have to do a cheap plug when I go like this on the replay. There is a six-minute clip from my Thursday Q&A show that I talked about AEW, that toxic environment, and Tony Khan now labeling anybody who critiques against AEW as a bot, a hater, a troll, a this, a that, a this. Funny thing is, is that I did my video a day before Tony Khan with his latest shit. We'll talk about that a little bit later. I think we should get into some important topics. And uh, I want to open up with Roman Reigns and the teasing of unifying the tag titles and also him versus Nakamura. Okay. Yesterday on SmackDown, Roman Reigns, while cutting a promo, since he is the unified champion, since the Usos are tag champs, he threw out the idea that maybe the tag title should also be unified. Everybody and their mother. We've been saying it for years and years and years. I counted 17 podcasters yesterday. Told you, told you, told you, told you, told you, told you, told you. Remember what I said about the heavyweight title being unified? That's only going to be a few months. Roman having two titles just for a few months, everybody. Because remember my thumbnail from a month, month and a half ago? Be careful what you wish for. Because if you only have one heavyweight champion now instead of two, that you lose opportunity for Big E and Lashley and a bunch of others because there ain't no way they're going to be able to break through the either Lesnar or Roman Reigns right now. Of course, they're not going to do that. And remember what I have said for months and months and months. Three years ago, four years ago, five years ago, it is a different argument. It is a different time. Four or five years ago, some of the wrestlers that could possibly hold heavyweight gold were not considered at that time. Hell, some of them weren't even on the main roster. But when you have people saying that four years ago, five years ago, I said over and over and over and over again that the titles should be unified. There should be no brand split, no roster split. Guys, gals, I'm going to go on WWE's website for a minute. This is a time where it is good to check out video. I am going to show you right now, five years ago, 2017, who the WWE title holders were in NXT and the main roster. Now, we're obviously not going to spend time on each one, but there is a pictorial gallery that you could see on the screen right now and as you go through this list of Asuka being record NXT champion, Kevin Owens, universal champion, AJ Styles, WWE champion. Wait, wait, wait. You mean to tell me that AJ Styles and Kevin Owens should have unified these titles? I don't remember anybody saying that five years ago. Should we, should we continue? 
Okay, we go a little bit later on in the year. Roman Reigns, United States champion. The Miz, Intercontinental champion. Look at that, NXT. DIY, tag team champions. Everybody loves it. Rich Swan, he, he is a cruiserweight champion. We go on. Look, Shinsuke, NXT champion. Does anybody really remember anything about, oh, we got to end the roster split? We got to end the brand split in 2017? We got to unify all these? I don't remember any of that. You go down his list. Yeah, I know some things never change. Charlotte Flair with a title. We go, we continue. Look at this. Cesaro with a with a title. Oh my God. Yeah, unify those titles. All right. Between the Usos, Cesaro, and Sheamus, who do you think? Who who do you think would have ended up being the tag champs if there was only one instead of two back then? Oh, look at this. Oh, look at that. Jason Jordan and Chad Gable, they were tag champs also. If we only have one set of tag titles and the Usos are dominating right now, do you think that they would hold gold? I don't think so. You go down there. You could look, look, Dean Ambrose. You just go down the list. You tell me where, where anybody thought it. It sounds good. When people don't research, anything could sound like it makes sense. I'm just going that look now look Gallows and Anderson anybody really I don't remember any of anybody with see that's why like I say everybody you know there's a you got to worry about 2022 fuck 2021 fuck 2018 fuck 2017 2010 2005 2002 you got to worry about now and you have to worry about what is best for pro wrestling in 2022. Not what I said a year ago, not what I said five or 10 years ago. You got to worry about now. And unifying the tag titles, you don't think that's going to kill opportunity? The sub tag teams that are on the threshold, but since there is an extra tag championship, yeah, they probably could break through. So again, just like I said a month, month and a half ago, I say it again now. Be careful what you wish for. Because when a certain tag team holds that stranglehold on those belts for an extended period of time, and you wonder why tag teams don't get... Look at the women's tag team championships. A lot of people feel that WWE has totally screwed up the women's tag team division even further. Yes, Sasha... And Naomi right now are tag champs. But you look at the overall division, they just broke up Carmella and Zelina, even though a lot of people didn't like them as tag champs either. They're about to break up Liv Morgan and Rhea Ripley. Who's left? But women said, there's only one tag team titles. So as long as you have only one women's tag team champs across two brands, you don't need nine women's tag teams. You might only need four or five. So when people want to throw that end the roster split, unify all the titles, be careful what you wish for. Because if you start dissecting it and thinking about it, it is not the right time. Maybe three years ago it was. Maybe six, seven years ago it was. But it certainly is not the right time now. So, now, as far as uh, Shinsuke Nakamura, you know, we should have figured this out once Rick Boogs went down with the injury. Like, who's going to be the next opponent for Roman Reigns? So, oh, so let me, let me say one last thing about the tags. Let me say one last thing because I didn't get to my ultimate point. I expect the Usos possibly face RK Bro. And they could tease unified tag champs for even a short period of time. But I promise you all, unifying the tag team titles is not the smart way to go in 2022. And I will never accept that as a conclusion just so I could share I was right. There is a bigger underlying problem right now with WWE, and that is the tag team division. They went through Alpha Academy. The Street Profits, it just feels like they're all over the place. 
They fucked up the men's tag team division as well. Nakamura and Boogs were supposed to be your tag champs, and Boogs went down with an injury. So they are so strapped right now with a good tag team to break out and be the next challengers, they have to tease RK Bro. And look, RK Bro versus the Usos has been entertaining. They've had some bangers. Absolutely, they have some. But the teasing of unified titles is just smoke and mirrors for an underlying bigger problem that WWE has right now with the tag titles. Okay. Let me talk about Nakamura and Roman Reigns, answer a couple of questions, and then we will move on to a few other topics. Uh, yesterday on SmackDown also, Roman Reigns closes out SmackDown. What's next for Roman Reigns? And Shinsuke Nakamura comes out. Anybody that follows my shows knows I am a big fan of Shinsuke Nakamura. They did this, I think, with Tribute to the Troops a year ago. Shinsuke and Roman Reigns do have history, and they actually have had some decent matches. But out of the entire Raw and SmackDown roster, the best they could come up with for the time being is Shinsuke Nakamura. I saw the internet wrestling community, and I do have my list of topics, and the one statement that got like 3,000 likes was Shinsuke Nakamura versus Roman Reigns will be tremendous. Not stupendous, tremendous. Yeah. And it also have a very predictable outcome. You just came out of WrestleMania 38. I understand everything now resets to zero. We're at the beginning of the season. But out of the entire Raw and SmackDown roster, even some from, from NXT, you put Shinsuke out there simply because Rick Boogs went down with an injury. This is the best they could come up with after the most important match in recent history, Brock Lesnar versus Roman Reigns. I'm not saying it's going to be a bad match, but what a awful, predictable outcome. This is the best they could do? I thought it was a huge letdown yesterday. And I am not more a fan. There was no element of surprise. None whatsoever. You go back a year and you realize they actually had a lot more interaction than some remember. So I just wanted to throw that out there. So, um, okay, a couple other things, and I'll give you the quick SmackDown results. Raquel Gonzalez, and some people didn't understand when I wrote that she debuted on SmackDown with a new old name, a new old name. Raquel Gonzalez will now be known as Raquel Rodriguez. Oh, I could picture those autograph photos coming, R, R. I can see it already. It's good. And you know what? I, I will predict that Raquel ultimately, maybe not right away, because when you're new to the main roster, you spell things out. I remember Big E with his order. I have some of his autograph cards. He would write Big E Langston, write everything out. You know, and then after a while, I think it was just an E, <laughs> like a big E. But, um, I guarantee you, at the end of the day, I don't know if I could do this reverse, but it, it she'll sign it like just two R's, almost like Triple H. If she could get like another R in her name, like, uh, I don't know. So she will now be Raquel Rodriguez. Now, why do I say it's a new old name? Because if people remember when Raquel Gonzalez first started appearing on NXT, I kept getting her name wrong. I called her Reina Gonzalez. I called her Raquel Rodriguez on numerous occasions. So they go in with Raquel Rodriguez. They're creating their own intellectual property for the main roster. That's what it is, plain and simple. Raquel Rodriguez is being used to create intellectual property on the main roster. Just like 
uh, Marcel Barthel's name changed, just like Walter. And I got to tell you, I loved what Walter said in an interview a couple of days ago. He said that years back, if he would have debuted as Gunther, and now they changed his name to Walter, the same people would have said that the name sucked. Why are you changing the name? And I think that it's so spot on. Uh, I could care less of you. Look, people want, you know, listen, fans yesterday chanting Walter. I'm sure some of them don't pay attention to NXT. And, you know, they just chanted Walter because that's the name they used to and that's the name they like. But this reminds me of when Bray Wyatt first debuted on the main roster. And I remember it, and I'm sure a lot of you do as well, when he was around ringside and you had people yelling in his face, Yo, it's Husky Harris! Like, you're some smart, wise-ass that you should get a blowjob because you're going in Bray Wyatt's face and you're calling him Husky Harris. You know, it's, it's stupid. And I think what Walter said is so spot on. People would have bitched if it was reverse the names. So, all right. So Raquel Gonzalez is now Raquel Rodriguez. Big deal. Lacey Evans made her reintroduction yesterday on SmackDown. And listen, props to every single one of you out there who, like me and Mish and many other people, said years ago, Lacey Evans has such an awesome history, a background with her family, military and beyond. You know, talking about homeless, talking about a father with mental issues, that's all true. Lacey Evans has such an inspirational story and an inspirational backdrop that all you got to do is just go with that. And so many people will relate to it. Now, you know, I think she rambled a little bit too long yesterday. And that one line that she made where she said that something like, you know, uh, I'm not better than the women's roster, but they're not better than me. I know that sounds catchy, but that is definitely a fed line from WWE. Think about that. You know, if we use it for podcasts, I'm not better than the other podcasters, but they're not better than me. So what does that say? We're all shit? Like, no, you want to aspire to be the best. You see Bianca Belair. I'm the strongest, the baddest, the baddest, the this, the this, EST, EST, the strongest, the wildest. Blah, 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 blah. She doesn't turn around and say, you know, I'm strong. The roster, I may not be stronger than the other roster, the other women, but they're not stronger than me. I mean, I understand. They want Lacey Evans to come across as everyday person. But just keep it simple, WWE. There were so many inspirational story chapters that she said yesterday. Stick to two or three. Just stick to two or three. You put it out there. She's back. She's obviously going to be a baby face. And her now being a mom as well, I like it. I like it. A lot of us wanted something similar to this when she first debuted. Obviously, they couldn't because she was a heel, but now, okay, better late than never. Good, good. I'm very, very happy with it. Okay, now, yes, double negative. Thank you, Xander. Double negative. Double negatives suck. Seriously, I don't ever like double negatives. And double positives can be double negatives as good as well. They, they may be as good as me. But I'm as good as them. That sounds like something Yogi Berra would say. I know I'm using an outdated reference, but I think people understand what I mean by that. Can you picture Yogi Berra? They may be as good as me, and I'm as good as them. Pass the pipe, please. Chief Rocca. Shout out to you, my friend, Chief Rocca. Thank you very much for the super chat. Um, we got the split yesterday with Madcap Moss. And Baron Corbin, Happy Corbin, you know, good, good. I think all of us predicted that, you know, right after Mania, Corbin blames him for the loss, split is done. 
They got to get rid of the madcap name. Get rid of madcap. Do you go with Riddick Moss? I don't know. What do you all think? I hope they don't just go with Moss. I just, I don't know. There's just something about it. I mean, I know Moss is like some like al algae or something. Riddick Moss, I, I guess. I guess. Again, I don't care about the Shangada name. It's what they do with the person. And listen, we've talked about it before, but if you're newer and others have not brought this up, WWE is super high on Riddick Moss. They think, not on the level of Austin Theory with what they predict for the future, but they think Riddick Moss is going to go big. Going to go big. Not Big E, we're going to go big. No, no, no. E, they're going to go big with him. But they have some very, very, you know, bright aspects of his career that they, they think he will reach. So we'll see what happens. People are laughing. They want to go big. I want to go big. Oh, I can't wait to talk about the robot stuff. Anybody remember my hotline days? Mike the Robot. We used to make fun of him. The Robot. All right. SmackDown results from yesterday. Butch. We did the watch party yesterday. I expected Butch to either be disqualified because he would just start beating up on Xavier Woods and wouldn't stop. Referee would disqualify him. Or I thought maybe uh, Rich Holland with the club hits Xavier Woods, but no, we get a fruit roll up and Butch loses. I thought it was so stupid. Everybody out there that complained, I am with you. I mean, did look, Butch is breaking his cherry. He's breaking his SmackDown cherry. He's having his first match as Butch. All right, if you want the motherfucker to lose, you, you, yeah, making him you're treating him like, I hate to use this example because it's so horrible. Any of you out, oh, man, I can't bring up the story. The Philadelphia story. Now I brought it up. Now people are going to be like, what about the Philadelphia? All right. There is a horrible story that I don't advise anybody to look at the video, but uh, I'm bringing it up for a reason. Um, two guys were walking down the street in Philly. And the only reason why I'm bringing it up is because there is a positive conclusion to it. But two guys walking down the streets of Philly they had a, I think, a pit bull. One, one or two pit bulls. I think it might be two. And as they're walking down the street, they see a cat inside the front of somebody's house, like right in the stoop area. And um, it's obviously a family cat that was outside the house. They open the gate and they let their dogs go and they're coaching the dogs and cheering them on as they maul this cat. And the cat ended up needing to go to the hospital, but there was a gigantic donation drive. And from what I seen last, the cat is going to be okay. But the thing is, is that there are people out there who have dogs trained that they're on a leash they just want to, like, be let go and just maul, and just maul, maul, maul. And that's the perception of what WWE's been doing with Butch, that Butch is just this dog on a leash. You let the leash go. He just knows one speed. He's just brawling, beating the living crap. Can't stop. Referee trying to contain him. He's just a rabid dog that doesn't want to stop, and the referee has to disqualify him. No. He gets fruit rolled up. He gets a fruit roll up. But that was so stupid yesterday, man. Him smacking around Sheamus and Ridge afterwards. I know the crowd kind of like cheered it, but awful. Awful. I know this is WWE's way of, hey, you broke your cherry. You broke your cherry. You made your debut. You lost. Most people lose in their debut. Still, asinine. Xavier Woods did not need that win yesterday. Did not need it. Gunther destroying Joe Alonzo. 
Drew McIntyre defeats Sami Zayn by countout. A lot of people still keep asking me, what's with the cheese? It's the mousetrap. WrestleMania. That's where they're getting that from. It's more comedy father. Fine. Liv Morgan beating Sasha Banks. All this is doing is trying to gain additional interest on Raw that, hey, Rhea Ripley and Liv Morgan have a legitimate shot. No, they don't. No, they don't. Rhea Ripley and Liv Morgan will be splitting. But Liv Morgan getting the win yesterday. Now, if WWE was smart, they could have held off this tag title shot for WrestleMania Backlash, which is taking place, I think, May 8th, right around that time. Don't hold me on the date. I don't have it in front of me. I think it's May 8th. They could have had Rhea and Liv versus Sasha and Naomi at WrestleMania Backlash. Hey, who knows? Maybe that still happens. But what they could have done on Raw instead is they could have Rhea Ripley beat Naomi one-on-one. -on -one. And now, you know, this is the suspension of disbelief is, hey, Liv beat Sasha, Rhea beat Naomi. Maybe they could win the tag belts. You have it at WrestleMania Backlash, Rhea and Liv lose, Rhea turns on Liv. Raw's the next day, and you have Rhea Ripley aligned with Edge. Not that hard. Maybe they still do it. Maybe we get a clusterfuck finish on Monday. And that's pretty much, from what I remember, the matches that went down on SmackDown. So one other thing I want to bring up. So obviously we're going to have Roman Reigns versus Shinsuke at WrestleMania Backlash. But we're also going to have an I Quit match. Charlotte Flair versus Ronda Rousey. Now, if anybody has been following my stuff for the last month, I keep bringing up Survivor Series, Charlotte Flair versus Ronda Rousey, the match where they just went wild with the Singapore Kings. That's what they should have done at WrestleMania. If they would have just had a flat-out brawl, I think it would have been a thousand times better than what we got at WrestleMania back. Now they're doing an I quit match, which does allow the outside toys to be used. So I think this will be a lot better than what went down at Mania. But please, God Almighty, you got to put somebody with, with Ronda Rousey. I know, I know the easy answer is Paul Heyman. The problem is Paul Heyman, his tribal chief, that's it. It's it. It's like a dog with separation anxiety disorder. You walk around your house and the dog is rubbing your leg all throughout the house. The minute you walk out of the house, the dog is on the window just waiting for you to come home. Paul Heyman is like that separation anxiety dog for Roman Reigns. They do not want Paul Heyman to have outside people, he would be ideal for Ronda Rousey. Ronda yesterday, again, with this just very, like, somebody's got to seriously, like, pull a nose hair. You know, give her a wet willy. You know, give her a wedgie. You know, step on her shoe. You know, do something to piss her off. Say something bad about her mother. Say something bad about her kid. Get her fucking pissed off when she brings it out on the stage. She just comes out there and it feels like she just took sleeping pills. At the very end of her promo, she got a little angry. A little angry. But, uh, man, she needs a mouthpiece. The problem is who, who? MVP? No. I know people were talking about LA Knight as being a manager. I mean, I don't know how you go for LA Knight to, to Ronda Rousey. He would be a spectacular mic piece for Ronda, but I just don't see how you bring the two together. Hell, I would have been I'd be fine with Malcolm Bivens if you could somehow, especially with Diamond Mind, you know, the original perception about all like the the UFC, you got Ivy Nile and the Creed brothers, man, if there could have been some bigger, powerful names in that, 
he could have had Ronda Rousey somehow intertwined with it. But even that, I don't see how that would work. So, Xander's is a liner with Shayna Baszler. Shayna Baszler, I don't think, is going to be that much of a better mic piece for Ronda Rousey. Somebody needs to be the mic piece, and Ronda just sits there like this with the look on her face, but it's just, oh, it's painful. It's painful. I think the match will be so much better than WrestleMania, but, man, you know, all Charlotte's got to do is laugh, and, and you're like, okay, she already out promoted her. She just sit there and laugh. You don't have to do anything else. She outdid her. All right, before we move on over to uh, AEW, because we do have a few things to talk about, I would like to give a couple of super shout-outs. Oh, this is WrestleMania. Is this wait, whoa, whoa, hold on a second. Oh, yeah, that's from WrestleMania. Nice. <laughs> My apologies. Chris Cutterer, are AEW fans being a little ungrateful with all the Cody is a trader talk, considering he accept he's accepting a challenge to draw ten thousand fans, or he accepted the challenge to draw the ten thousand fans to the first All In directly to AEW. Be informed, it's kind of messed up. Yeah, I, I try to ignore the, that noise. See, this is the thing that's funny. I, you know what? I'll get back to your question. Like before we get to AEW, because I think it all intertwines with each other. I'll get back to what you said. James Tutton, he likes the name change from Marcel Barthel to Ludwig Kaiser, but he needs to know my take that clickbaiters were pushing the Ludwig Klaus name, who was a Nazi, even though WWE didn't use it yesterday. Keep up the good work. Believe it or not, everyone, that super chat that came in about an hour and a half before the show started, that's what sparked all my research. Because as I was preparing for the show, you know, I that came in, and I was like, wait a minute. And then I go back and I look at my tweets yesterday. I was like, son of a bitch, these people are having me Google a name that WWE ended up not using. So, yeah, I, I mean, I answered it earlier. You know, if you see, this is my take on it. WWE never publicly used Ludwig Klaus yesterday. I don't care if it's on a chalkboard. I don't care if they got it on a piece of paper. I don't, I don't care if everybody walks by. The password is Ludwig Klaus. Hey, you know, I need to unlock your phone. What's the password? Ludwig Klaus. Hey, um, you know, hey, it's a cute little dog. What's the dog's name? Ludwig Klaus. Hey, where are you going to go out for dinner after? We're going to go to a steakhouse called Ludwig Klaus. Steakhouse. I rhymed. I'm a poet in case you didn't know it. I don't care if everybody in their mother backstage yesterday said Ludwig Klaus. Ludwig Klaus. Ludwig Klaus. They didn't go with it. They didn't go with it. I wish we would find out that they threw that name out there yesterday just to find out who's the moles that are feeding this crap to people. My only problem with bringing up Ludwig Klaus yesterday, which WWE did not use, is those places did not bring up the other three names. Why did they not bring up the other three names? Well, because there was no controversy with those names. The Kaiser other spelling, they felt it was too complicated for fans. So they went with Kaiser, almost like a Kaiser roll, you know. But um, if you're going to throw Klaus out there, throw the other names as well. And if they claim, oh, we didn't have the other three names, oh, why not? Why not? I mean, isn't this what they do for a living? Though that was pretty awful. Pretty awful. It should have been a tag team in WCW back in the 90s. I know we have pretty wonderful. They should have pretty awful. No, you're pretty awful. Roger Rubio is a robot. Yes, I was trying to get some robot loving this morning. I was lonely. My fiance stood home last night. I was hoping we would have had some hobots online. Maybe you know, offer me a little bit of lubrication. You know, grease. You know, I was looking for some hobots with some nice, big giant transformers. That robot stuff is ridiculous. And by the way, when I get to Becky Lynch and her trolling Tony Khan, there was much more behind it. And I put the answer up on Twitter. Nobody gave a shit. Well, people did give a shit. 
but they ignored it because the answer is too good because then it dispels all the controversy. People want to keep the controversy. Oh, look at Becky Lynch trolling Tony, Tony Khan. No, she was not doing that. I'll explain why a little bit later. This is Cruiserweight. Why are we getting some like outdated stuff? Well, shout out to Cruiserweight anyway. Shout out again to Chief Rocca. I had Chief to it. James Campbell. He knows I don't like the tag title unification idea, but he thinks it could be a match of the year candidate quali quality, main event quality. My thoughts. I am all for top quality matches. It also should mean something. Tell a story. There should be some type of you know storyline behind it. Um, the problem is the tag team division in WWE is a big problem right now. It is bad in the women's side. It's bad on the men's side. Even the heavyweight. Just think about this. Think about this for a minute. Right now, the wrestler with arguably the best crap of opponents is Finn Balor. Who, in suspension of disbelief, are you going to say to me right now that if they faced Roman Reigns at WrestleMania Backlash, that you could sit back and say, that person could possibly win it. I mean, yeah, right after Mania, we're not expecting that, but you want to feel like there's a possibility. You look at Ricochet, the best they could do is Humberto Carrillo and Angel Garza. He doesn't even have any vile. Look, he's facing Jinder Mahal next week. I like Jinder Mahal. <laughs> you think about it. The person right now that has the possible, like, strongest opponents with a title is Finn Balor. Because you could see Damian Priest. Remember my idea on Thursday? I'd love to see Finn Balor. I, what was the match I said last weekend? Finn Balor and AJ Styles versus Damian Priest and, and Edge. But I would do one step further. Have Finn Balor turn on AJ Styles. And have some variation of the demon return, like the dark side, and have Finn Balor join up with Edge and Damian Priest. And I think Finn Balor versus AJ Styles would be an incredible feud with Finn Balor being the heel. Finn Balor would have, you know, could feud with Riddle. Finn Balor, there's some people that Finn Balor could, he might have the best possible opponents right now. Just think about that. Coming out of WrestleMania, he might have the best. That's, that's crazy. That is crazy. But again, I'm fine for a unification match. But, uh, you know, I just can't believe that the titles are in this much disarray right now. You know, not very good. Tommy D, love my rant about AEW and the toxic atmosphere. Pretty funny to hear what I said Thursday. Just to have Tony Khan post his insane bot tweet the day after. I guess that's an emoji that you can come up. And um, let's revisit Chris. AEW fans, are they being a little ungrateful with Cody? All right, listen. I'm not going to repeat what I said on Thursday about that climate, that culture in AEW. But there's obviously a big problem going on. And, you know, the thing that people need to realize, okay, you need to realize something. You know, even when Tony Khan writes a tweet as crazy as it is, or, you know, when CM Punk calls somebody stupid, or Dax calls somebody a fool, or this person says this, or somebody embarrasses this person, so that you look at the number of people that are liking these tweets. It's in the thousands. It's not in the hundreds of thousands. It's not in the millions. You know, I can't, I don't know who to give credit for this. Somebody posted this on line today. It's comparing Tony Khan's tweet from yesterday to what Vince McMahon said with Pat McAfee. Now, for those that did not see the tweet that Tony Khan wrote yesterday, and he wrote a few, but the first one is the one that everybody is focused on, 
and then we'll lead to Becky Lynch in a moment. Tony Khan says, and I quote, an independent study has, wait, I got a, okay. An independent study has confirmed that much of the staunch anti-AEW online community aren't real individuals. It's a staff running thousands of accounts, an army of bots to signal boost them. Look or look closely, they aren't real people. Who'd pay for such a wildly expensive thing? Let me read that one more time. An independent study has confirmed that much of the staunch anti-AEW online community aren't real individuals. It's a staff running thousands of accounts and an army of bots to signal boost them. Look closely, they aren't real people. Who'd pay for such a wildly expensive thing. Well, Vince McMahon said to Pat McAfee, quote, you listen to your audience, no matter where it's from, but sometimes the internet audience, a portion of it, can be relatively biased and a bit harsh. So I don't listen to them. I don't listen to none of them. What a stark contrast of comments by both of them. That's why the rant I did Thursday night is catching on big online because people are starting to see that anybody that criticizes AEW, the ones with the biggest audiences are haters, trolls, bots, paid. And I, I originally wrote a tweet in response to Tony Khan, but I deleted it because it's like, I don't write stuff to get catchy likes to it. But I was thinking about Rampage's ratings on Friday. In the fours, even in the fives, people remember when they expected a million minimum? Remember I said six, 700,000 should be the average? Now we're in the fours. Does that mean that the bots all have Nielsen boxes? And that Friday night, they're like, let's all turn to Barney and SpongeBob, or let's just take like the, the worst show on, on TV and give it a rating. Explain to me how that rating has gotten so pathetic. Are these bots all Nielsen holders and they just refuse to put on AEW in a Friday night? Here's another thing. Whenever you read ratings reports now, all right, you will find a group of people that keep comparing AEW's dynamite rating from a year ago. Oh, their demo is up 49%. Their rating compared to 12 months ago is up 76%, 35%, 191%. Stop Start comparing it to the day that CM Punk made his debut. Let's look, because next week I am going to post on the screen the grid of the ratings from CM Punk's dynamite debut. Yes, I know he debuted on Rampage first. That rating is obviously his first return to pro wrestling. So, you know, I expect that number to be big. But I want you to see the ratings from the day that CM Punk debuted. And the reason why I go with that is you look at all of the names that have debuted in AEW after CM Punk. You go from Brian Danielson to the House of Black and you go to Keith Lee and Adam Cole and the, the uh, Ultimate Elite or whatever. That, I mean, you go down that list, it is crazy how many people they have signed after CM Punk. I want you to just look at the ratings like this. That is a better viewpoint. But Tony Khan, I admire Tony Khan and I support AEW and I will continue supporting AEW. Yeah, I'll change the way I cover it a little bit. I'm not going to break my back and get two hours sleep for AEW anymore, but I'm always going to offer what I think could make it better. Getting rid of the ratings, that ranking system, would be the best thing for AEW because if Will of Utah truly does catch fire, you look at his fucking win-loss record, what are you going to do? Have him squash people on dark and elevation for the next month and say, oh, he's on an eight? a win winning streak that's not the way it works you know i will always offer in my opinion th 
things that could help improve AEW. I'm not just going to say, oh, they stuck. I won't, I won't, because I want them to be good. But the thing is, if Yuta catches fire, and maybe the decision two, three weeks from now is, hey, let's put the, let's, let's have him beat Scorpio Sky for the belt. Nobody would expect it. You know, you remember when Jungle Boy took on Jericho? Wasn't Jungle Boy's record like 0 and 12 at the time? You remember everybody going right to the rankings, the rate ranking system? Like, wait a minute, why is this guy getting a title shot? He's like 0 and 12. That was the precise moment that they should have just said, fuck this ranking system. You go and you strike while the iron is hot. To have now Wheel of You, you know what's gonna happen. Wheel of You is gonna go on dark, it's gonna go on elevation. And for the next two months, he's gonna be he's gonna be schmuck number one, schmuck number two. He's gonna be Jose Cuervos. He's gonna be some dumb fuck. He's gonna be be Tony Montana, Tony Mama Luke, Tony Luke. And suddenly, oh, Wheeler Yuta, Ever since joining up with John Moxley and Brian Danielson, he's fourteen and oh. Come on, seriously. And and people will say, well. He's 14 and 0. So, Tony Khan now, I've said it forever. I am a fan of Tony Khan. I admire him. His passion for pro wrestling is awesome. But he does act like a petulant, rich child that in a lot of ways, has a lot of very thin skin. This is nothing new what I'm saying right now. But he's got billions of dollars. So no matter how much sense, if I was a physician and I could clinically diagnose him with something, doesn't matter. He is a billionaire. He is giving a niche audience what they want to see, what they believe is what they want to see. And as long as that audience is there and as long as that network provides the programming, you really can't fight with Tony Khan. He's going to win the argument. And there's going to be a giant audience that will win the argument for him. So as far as the shitting on Cody Rhodes, look, most of those people still don't understand that AEW is just a business. You know, Tony Khan in an interview in the last 24 hours said, how could anybody in their right mind not find room for Keith Lee and Swerve Strickland? And you have to be crazy to let them go. Well, I guess now they're going to have lifetime contracts in AEW. You know, because you can't just go like, oh my God, he's awesome. He's amazing. How could anybody, you know, you, paint, you put yourself in a, Huge corner by doing that. But Becky Lynch had a little fun with Tony Khan's tweet. Uh, Braun Strowman, Adam Shear, also, he twisted it and used the same phrase for control your narrative. But Becky Lynch, and then I'll lead to the WWE stuff. Becky Lynch went ahead and said this. Now, on the screen, you could see it. She wrote word for word what Tony Khan said, but instead of anti-AEW, she wrote anti-Becky Lynch. An independent study confirmed that much of the staunch anti-Becky in the arena booers aren't real individuals. It's a staff running thousands of uh, AI bots, an army of bots. Look closely, they aren't real people. Who'd pay for such a wildly expensive thing? Then she had fun. She posted pictures of Trish Stratus, pictures of Lita, pictures of Ronda Rousey, trying to say that they're the ones paying for this. Now, for those that don't know, and I brought this story up about a month ago, and we talked about it, 95% of the net has no idea about this list. As far as social media and Twitter trolling, this list came out for 2020. This is the top 10 names of the most trolled 
pro female athletes on Twitter. Ronda Rousey, 83% of all the tweets associated with Ronda Rousey's name last year was negative. Number two was Becky Lynch. This is not a wrestling top 10. Of all female athletes, this is Becky last year, having a kid, you know, coming back to wrestling, doing some of the good things that she does. She still got 76% of all the tweets were negative. And if you look at this list, you look and you realize that Becky Lynch has like the third most total tweets of them all. Now you have Serena Williams, Naomi Osaka, Simone Biles, and you have some others on the list as well. But that's why Becky Lynch was having fun with this. If there's anybody that could or has a right to complain and feel that they are being trolled by bots and everything else, I would think Ronda Rousey and Becky Lynch would have a good case for it. They're the top two in all women's sports. Bet you never knew that. Bet you never knew that. Now, here's the thing that is a problem for Tony Khan. As much as there is complaining of AEW on social media, the complaining towards WWE in favor of AEW is 10, 20, 50 times as much. Because here's the thing. A bot might post a reaction, even if these bots were real. A bot would post a reaction, but a bot has no feeling, has no emotion. It's business. It's not personal. When someone attacks AEW, I have not yet seen in this world, no matter how technologically advanced Japan is, I have never seen a bot who, if you insult the bot, the bot turns around and says, hey, go fuck yourself. Go fuck your mother. I'll fucking do this to you, you son of a bitch. Go fuck yourself. Go eat my asshole. Go suck on my Transformers, you piece of shit. I'm going to get my bots after you. And let's see how you like it when we roll over your asses. I will do even further. We're going to rewire your... I just don't have emotions. People criticize AEW, even if a fucking bot goes there. You got a thousand AEW fans online belittling, putting people down, trying to intimidate people. What this comes down to is Tony Khan has very thin skin. Tony Khan, in many ways, is a petulant, rich child who is an awesome wrestling fan. Now, if you saw the thumbnail for tonight's show, this is the thumbnail that I made. And believe me, I'm not one, I will never clickbait any of you out there. But I ask you this question. For those that don't know, Tony Khan yesterday in the middle of Rampage said that he was going to make a huge match announcement for Wednesday's Dynamite. And he announces Minoru Suzuki versus Samoa Joe. I think the, maybe the Ring of Honor TV title will be on the line or something like that. But anyway, Minoru Suzuki versus Samoa Joe. All right, good match. I'm not complaining about it. But Tony Khan also wrote this online before the match announcement. He wrote, and I quote, I'm planning to announce a match for next Wednesday that I've dreamed for many years. And I believe it'll get a lot of fans fired up for this Wednesday's Dynamite live from New Orleans. I also included Jeff Hardy jumping off a ladder from Wednesday's Dynamite as well. Now, I blurred the background, and I thank people who are still trying to help me on YouTube understand how things really work over here. You're supposed to blur background, stuff like that. Anybody remember that picture? Somebody in the front row had a sign that said, please be careful. A lot of people were very uncomfortable with Jeff Hardy going off that ladder on Wednesday. A lot of people felt like, what the fuck was the point of this ladder tables match versus the Butcher and the Blade? Is Tony Khan 
with the undisputed era, with some of the matches that we see, with the way some people are pushed, with the way some people are utilized, is he booking AEW based on what the fans want to see? Or is he booking it to pleasure his booking fantasies, going back to the Ring of Honor days, that, oh, my God, you know, this is what I always wanted. This is what I would have done. Look at Rapunji Vice. Remember that? All of a sudden, what happened to who's, who's the Japanese wrestler that's the leader of Rapunji Vice? That everybody was saying, oh, Forbidden Door, here it comes next week. Rapunji Vice, Rapunji Vice. Who, chat room, help me with this. Who's the guy that everybody's like, oh my God, it's happening. It's happening. It's like that kid from Family Guy. They're like, it's happening. It's happening. Rapunji Vice. With all due respect, 99% of you out there could give a flying fuck about Rapunji Vice. Obviously, people in the chat room don't care because they're giving me ridiculous answers. I don't think Rocky Romero or Chris Jericho are Japanese. Who's the guy? Nobody knows. That's crazy. Nobody knows. Who is the one guy from Japan that everybody said, forbidden door, it's happening, next week it's happening, never happened. Never happened. Nobody, still, nobody knows. My point is, is Tony Khan fulfilling his fantasies more than anything? Yeah, people don't know. Sorry for everyone that follows Rapanji Vice, but you know what I mean. Anyway, point is, the point is. Yeah, that's him, the guy that faced Jericho. Okada? Maybe it's Okada. Maybe it's Okada. My point is this, all right? Vince McMahon has always said that he gives us what we f should have or what he thinks we should have. You've heard him say that. You know, like he knows the, remember that infamous quote? I know the WWE Universe better than they do. So Vince McMahon gives us swerves and storylines. Oh, you know, right now it stinks, but in the end, you know, they, but does it feel like Vince McMahon books like every month-to-month -month pay per views of Raws and Smackdowns and WrestleManias and everything else to fulfill his own fantasies? All right, maybe on his bucket list was to have a match at 75 years old. But my point is, it's starting to feel more and more that Tony Khan, a lot of what you see on TV is his own personal fantasies being fulfilled just like buying Ring of Honor. He, he can't have Gabe Sapolsky handle creative. He can't have Carrie Silken do a lot of this stuff. He can't have people, you know, you know they'll, they'll have presence on TV and they'll be seen, but he's got to do it. He's got to do it. He's got to do it. He's got to do it because he's fulfilling his fantasies. When I saw, and, and here's, here's the response after he revealed that it was going to be Minoru Suzuki versus Samoa Joe. I really wasn't messing around today. Now, with the bots saying there's no storyline behind it, you know, it's a good match and everything, but, you know, it, it feels like it's just being thrown out there to throw it out there. Are those bots talking? Or could it be AEW fans that kind of would have liked to have seen a build or seen something behind it? So when you see, you know, some of these people like Willie Yuta with a Ring of Honor championship. I'm not saying he's not deserving of it. Willie Yuta, this is, and we'll segue to Willie Yuta. Willie Yuta is the Ring of Honor pure champion. If you do not like blood, do not look at my screen right now. But I am going to show you two pictures. This is John Moxley yesterday versus Willie Yuta. The match was a banger. I enjoyed it very much. Willie Utah could go, no question. After this match was over, I saw people saying that this has been billed better than anything WrestleMania, that this guy is a made man, that this guy is set because they aligned him with William Regal, John Moxley, and Brian Danielson as if, you know, they did it against you know like anything that tony Khan. i mean you know shouldn't we have veterans align themselves with young stars 
I mean, isn't that what's supposed to be done? Okay, that picture is not so bad. Now I zoom in. Will Yuta is the Ring of Honor pure champion. I'm sorry, was that, was that Ring of Honor pure rules yesterday? This is the AEW formula that they have been doing to try to get somebody over. They did it with the Bunny. They did it with Thunder Rosa and Britt Baker. They did it with Ty Conti, I think. You know, let's have them bleed beyond recognition. And they don't complain about it. And they rough it out. And they keep fighting and keep fighting and never give up and never give up and never give up. And then at the end of it, they're lying in a whole hot mess of blood. Oh, my God, that was epic, unbelievable, amazing. That person is made. That's it. His future is set. That's unbelievable. You'll rub. That's it. it, it that's it. Pack it in. The motherfucker is a Ring of Honor pure champion. If anybody out there does not understand Ring of Honor pure championship rules, they had Wheel of Utah fight in a street fight pretty much yesterday. That is the AEW template to try to get some people over. We'll just have them bleed, go through a table, put someone else through a table. Sometimes we'll use weapons. Sometimes we won't use weapons. We'll, we'll use tons and tons of blood. And then we'll get all the close-ups and the slow-mos of the blood squirting to the other side of the... Will you to put on a performance of his AEW career yesterday? That make him a made man? When I think of even like La Costa La Nostra or even the Mafia, anybody, a group, any group, any... You're made. That's it. You're at the top. You're made. That's it. You're in. You've been, you're a made man. I don't put Wheel of Yuta in a, made people is a very rare, exclusive class of people. Over the years, you, you see others in different eras just because AEW tells John Moxley, even if John Moxley went to AEW, look, we want to put Wheel of Yuta under our wing. All right. I guarantee you it was AEW that said, yeah, go 15, 20 minutes. You know, yeah, let him put in a crazy amount of offense. I mean, when John Moxley at the match, when the match was over yesterday, I saw people online saying, did you see Moxley's reaction after the match was over? I rewound it, and this is Moxley. As if John Moxley didn't expect this match to go 20-something minutes. It's entertainment, everybody. John Moxley did his job beautifully, making Wheel of Utah look like a million dollars. Wheel of Utah did his job beautifully and got himself over. Now it is up to Wheel of Utah to show what he can do as a technical wrestler, high flyer, pure champion. And let's see if he continues that aura, that popularity, that acceptance based on his actual wrestling ability. If AEW has to keep resorting to bleeding like a bad 70s samurai movie, and having to go street fight, hardcore, this, 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 and that, just so the fans would be like, unbelievable, emotional, this is slow mos and good blood. You know, that's the template that AEW likes to go to. Oh, we want to get somebody over a little bit more. We'll just have them go bleed beyond recognition. Let's see if Tony Khan gives Willie Utah matches and the time and the wins on Dynamite and Rampage. You give me in the next two months that he won against bullshit number one and bullshit number two, and we see a 10-12 win streak, and it's against Aaron Solo, with all due respect, Mike Smith, Pablo, blah, 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 blah. Come on. You kidding me? So, okay. 
they have decided he's the made man. Okay, let's see him beat Swerve Strickland. Let's see him get a title. Let's see him beat Jay Lethal. Let's see him beat these names. And on Dynamite, not a 46-second match on Elevation, you know, because we already visited that route. Let's see what they do with it. What made me laugh yesterday, or even today, was I wrote on social media that I liked the match a lot, and I wrote in capital letters a lot. In fact, what I'm going to do, if you just allow me, because I think it's definitely worth it, I am going to read you the tweet I said earlier about Wheeler, Utah. Here is the tweet I said earlier. I'm going to read it. I think it's only fair that I read it word to word for all of you out there because it's just going to prove a point. And this goes back to the atmosphere online. What I said about Wheel of Utah, I said, which day does John Moxley versus Wheel of Utah five-star rating come out? Which would rank higher, better than Cody Rhodes versus Seth Rollins? If they give that match yesterday five stars, that ranks higher than Cody versus Seth, which only got four and a half stars. I enjoyed Utah versus Moxley a lot, and I capitalized the word a lot. He's on his way. But made, let's see how made he is when blood, tables, and or weapons are not used. Will Utah is just pure. Do you know every response that I got back was negative? DT, why are you being harsh? I just said I liked the match a lot. I just said he's on his way. But because I didn't jerk off Wheel of Utah, DT, why are you being harsh? See, when Tony Khan talks about bots criticizing AEW, and it's a paid company, paid to talk about these things. For every alleged bot he's talking about, there are 20 that are doing this to AEW, that are doing this to WWE, that are all posting that picture of Tony Khan in the heavens, and that you, you know the one I'm talking about. He's like, I think I have it in my computer. So Tony Khan makes it seem like the World Wide Web is against AEW. This man, I believe, is totally fucking rattled with Cody Rhodes leaving. I think a lot of people realize how important Cody Rhodes was for the inception of AEW. And let me also remind everyone what I've said before. AEW will do just fine without Cody Rhodes. I do believe that. But this is a guy, Cody Rhodes, that knows what makes AEW tick. He knows how much of what Tony Khan does hands-on. He knows that Tony Khan, if he books a lot of what we see based on when he was a fan in Ring of Honor and he would have done this. You look at the Hardys right now, and I said it before, a lot of people are like, why are we getting this with Jeff Hardy? Like every week, jumping off a balcony, jumping off a windowsill, jumping off a, a ladder. Say, why? Is he going to die in two weeks? I mean, what's with the nine lives with Jeff Hardy? It feels like Tony Khan is putting this out there to fulfill his fantasy that, oh, the Hardys, yeah, they, they did that in WWE, but here... It's fulfilling his fantasy, and he believes that everybody at home is on the same page as him. So that's why my thumbnail was what it was. It feels like Tony Khan is pleasuring himself along with trying to pleasure the fans as well. And is that best for AEW business? Is it best for business? Because you see, you know, it, it feels like, and I brought this up before, somebody who has tons of video games, 
tons of toys in their house. Oh, I'm going to go to KB Toy Store. I got to get the latest game. You get the game a couple of days later, a week later. Oh, my God, this came out. I got to go to the store. I got to buy this. Two weeks later. Oh, my God, this came out. I got to buy this. And you play it for a little bit. Next thing you know, it goes on the shelf. Then you look back and you're like, holy shit, look at all this fucking toys I bought. I got to have it. 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 And sometimes people are brought on TV and used just so to say, you see, this person was not used the right way, but look what I did. I believed in this person. I knew this person could do so much more. Is this pleasuring himself and hoping that because people want an alternative to WWE so bad that they will go along with anything? And I'm not saying that it's bad. I'm not saying it's bad at all. But the thing is, if this is about pleasuring himself more than anything else, because he is the owner, he is the billionaire, and everybody that works for him is going to go along with it because he is the one overpaying for a lot of people. He's the one giving people freedom to do other things. You see, yesterday, because Brian Alvarez like made a mistake that Tony Khan hired a firm to go see what is happening online, and Tony Khan like jokes around like, hey, you know, Brian, now I'm not paying it the two hundred thousand dollars a month I pay you. And like every journalist and every podcast out there that's been doing this to AEW all think, oh, put me in on the joke. Tony, look at me. Look at me. I defend you. Look, look, I do. Every bot that Tony Khan thinks is criticizing him, he's got fifty people doing the opposite, helping AEW. This guy's crazy. The guy is very scared. He's nervous. He's thin skinned. Is AEW going out of business? No. AEW will get bigger. AEW will get better. AEW will progress. AEW will develop. They will strengthen themselves. But you have a very fragile billionaire at the helm that gets very, very triggered. Even if he believes that there's bots trying to bring him down. You turn around and write all these posts. I uncovered this. I uncovered that. You're the journalist. You find it. This is a guy who can't sleep at night. It's crazy, man. It's a little ridiculous. So, all right, we got to stop bringing this home. It's getting a little bit late. Got a Tammy Sitch update for you. And uh, a couple of NXT tidbits. First off, um, Raw on Monday, they have Cody Rhodes taking on The Miz. And I guess these are bots all saying, like, this is what they give Cody. Um, I remember Cody fighting, like, Lee Moriarty, something like that. Like, people are actually saying, like, this is the first match that, uh, that he has on Raw, The Miz. Like, The Miz is some bullshit person. It's ridiculous. The more you see the criticism towards WWE in favor of AEW, Tony Khan is, is crazy to bring up this bot thing because it's just blowing up in his face, seriously. Like I said, it when the ratings go down, compare it to when CM Punk signed. You see Rampage in the fours. You see little things gone. You realize you put so many people on that roster and the growth, I don't know if it's worth the amount of money that was invested. Maybe it is. I don't know. I don't work for them. But all I'm saying is, is that when you see people compare it to a year ago, that's bullshit. Because you look at the, the roster from a year ago and you see all the names that are not on it, you realize, wait a minute. We're not comparing apples to apples here. Yeah, there was fruit a year ago. These are apples, but a year ago they, they were, you know, raisins. So I have no problem with Cody Rhodes taking on the Miz. Ridiculous people complained about that. All right. NXT. Now we could say not only is Wesley, uh, excuse me, Nash Carter gone. There's some news with Wesley also. Uh not only is Nash Carter now officially gone, his bio has been removed from WWE's 
website, and they have stripped MSK of the tag titles. They won't even use the letters MSK anymore. They, they just said the tag team champions have been stripped. They won't even call them MSK. They, they distance themselves to Nash Carter so quickly. And as we talked about the other day, the primary reason is the Hitler picture. And there's a few other things that have not been made public, but it's not my place to make it public. The big question now is what are they going to do with Wes Lee? The talk, there's been three things, and it's common sense. One, you make him a single star, have him go for the North American Championship. The second thing is bring him to the main roster and have him team with a new partner, or you bring him to the main roster and he could be hopefully the next Ricochet, that next young single star. Right now, they're trying to figure out what to do with Wes Lee. Do not be surprised if he gets promoted to the main roster if they also change his name. They want to distance the MSK name as quickly as possible. So we should have new tag team champions crowned on Tuesday. If I was WWE, make the majority of the episode circle around the tag team. You could have the feud with Joe Gacy and Braun Breaker develop a little bit more, but I would focus on on that more than anything else. So, uh, yeah, Nash Carter is done. Uh, Tammy Sitch. Okay, I got to be careful how I say these things. And, I hold, and, you know, some people didn't understand it the other day. You know, when I bring, when I report or I bring up news, I have to give you facts. I could give you assumptions and I could give you my opinions on it, but when I give you facts, I have to give you facts. The fact is, is that the blood tox toxicology, you know, the blood test results for Tammy Sitch, I'm not back yet. So I'm not going to sit here and say and she was driving while she was drunk. I could tell you that witnesses believe that she was drunk. I could tell you that the cops in their police report, because I have the accident report, the police believe that she was drunk. But again, this is such a serious manner where she could be facing and could get easily 10 years in jail. They're not going to fuck it up even a bit where it could get thrown out in court by some high-paid lawyer. So the cops are not going to jump the gun, and I'm not going to jump the gun, and I'm not going to say this or this or this until it comes out. All right, so that's why the other day when I said that it was dusk, and when people drive in dusk, it is the most dangerous part of the day to be driving in. That is a goddamn fact. Whether Tammy is driving or Mammy is driving or Sammy is driving or you're driving or me driving, dusk is one of the scariest points of the day to be driving. You are blinded. If you don't know what dusk is, it's not just a certain time of the day where the sun starts to come down. Go online and understand about driving at dusk. That's the time that this accident happened. Am I saying, did I say the other day, dusk was the reason? No, I did not. Go back and you tune into it. All I could tell you at this point are facts. Now I'm going to give you some more facts. It's some you haven't read anywhere, not even TMZ. Uh, her license was taken away. She should not have been behind the wheel. Florida is not linked up with Jersey or PA or New York or other places. So the cops out there did not know the scope. They may have knew she was a celebrity and may have heard about the DUI arrests. But again, everything is, has to be done by the book, on paper, not on what you read or what you think or what you felt. That's why, regardless of why didn't the hospital run a blood test right there? Well, that's not the way it works. For us, Maybe we watch a NCI show, whatever that show shows our NCIS or whatever. Yeah, maybe like, hey, on a TV show, they run the blood results right there. No, that's not how it works. There's a lot of steps involved that we don't understand. Here's another thing. This has not been reported, but I have from direct people that the vehicle she was driving was that 
boyfriend. Say it that way. The boyfriend might be the same boyfriend that she threatened to kill with scissors. Now, here's the thing. I'm not going to throw shade on the guy, but this guy, <sighs> talk about someone who sadly was probably the perfect yang for Tammy. Tammy's ying, this person is yang. This guy is a, uh, a, a piece of work, and I don't say that complimentary. Um, here's the thing, and I've been in insurance since 98. Whether it's Florida or New York or anywhere else, I could tell you it's the same thing. He's in a lot of trouble. He's in a lot of trouble. And here's where it gets really, really crazy. She should not have been on the road. He is involved with her. He would have known if she had a driver's license or not. He allowed her to get behind that wheel, even if she didn't have an ounce of alcohol in her, even if it was dusk. He allowed an unlicensed driver, knowingly that that person should not be behind the wheel, that person has an auto accident and kills somebody, not only will Tammy Sitch get sued, but the owner of the vehicle will get sued. The owner's insurance company will get sued. That owner's insurance company is going to turn around and say, we're not paying this claim. This person knew. He, that person gave the vehicle to an unlicensed operator, of a person under suspension, revocation, whatever you want to call it. The insurance company is not going to want to cover it because she should not have been behind the wheel. How does this guy get away or save himself? He would have to tell the cops that she stole the vehicle. He would have to tell the cops she used the vehicle without my permission. That is the facts. So expect not only her get to get sued up the ass, but this guy, he's got some serious problems to deal with because you get a lawyer and now you have to worry that your insurance company is not going to cover this and then you could be held liable as well because the, the, the lawyers for that family are already drafting up papers and they're just waiting to find out if she was under the influence or drunk which obviously inflates it even more. Look, I have defended Tammy more than probably any other podcast publicly. Um, I have given her so many chances, but unfortunately I'm not her boyfriend. I'm not her father, her brother. I'm not her close friend. I'm not her counselor. I'm not a parole officer. I'm not a judge, jury, executioner. I'm nothing. Just someone who had some personal experiences with her always was friendly to me, always, you know, thought that she was better than was perceived. I am friendly with a lot of her very close friends, too, that spoke to her in the last two days. You know what one of those two friends said to me? As crazy as this sounds, one of the two people that talked to her in the last 24 hours said that, see, I got to be so careful because I this could get brought up later on, like, you know, who's this person that made this claim? Let's just say it like this, that Tammy had some items in her vehicle, nothing illegal, but items of value. I think that's the way to put it. And she was more concerned about getting those items back than anything else. Now, you know, could it be true? Sure. Could it be a friend just very, very upset at her for what happened? True. Could it be just that tough exterior? I don't know. I don't know. All I know is that by next week, we should have a pretty good idea as far as what, you know, came back on those results. But again, I know it seems crazy that it would take this long. Because remember, the accident happened on March 25th. Right now, it's April 9th. So that's 
15 days ago. It's not like it just happened two, three days ago, but 15 days ago. By next week, we should know. And unfortunately, you know, I already detailed charge-wise what you could be facing. Um, you're talking 10 years in jail, you know, maybe even more. Uh, vehicular manslaughter, especially if alcohol was involved, with all the other violations, if she was not supposed to be on the road, um, you know, and who knows what's going to happen with this guy. And it's going to be really curious because if this guy tells the cops, look, I had no idea that she used the car. She did not have my permission. I told her she should, could, she could not use the car. Then she could be sued. Uh, she could be accused of stealing a vehicle. I'm telling you, I have had customers who lent their vehicle to someone. The person gets a ticket and then, you know, or even an accident and then they get sued and the person's like, look, I didn't let that person use my vehicle. And like, all right, then you got to press charges. I'm not pressing charges. So crazy shit, man. It's crazy. It's not good. It's not good. All right. So before we get out of here, um, I did hear about this earlier today. Yes, rest in peace. Dwayne Haskins, I believe that's his name. He is the quarterback of the Steelers, I believe. Very, very young man that was. I believe hit by a car in Florida. And, um, you know, I don't know who the ESPN author was, but I saw some piece of shit dirtbag from ESPN. I mean, and you know it's written this way to get any attention on yourself, good or bad, because there are people that do that. Instead of just saying, you know, uh, young Steelers quarterback so and so dies in fatal auto accident in Florida. This person actually wrote something like, you know, Dwayne Haskins, you know, a struggling quarterback that didn't make this team of it, get it killed. Like, actually brought up like a bunch of negative things about the guy. And I don't know who's his name. A Adam Schefter, that's him. Thank you, Rockstar Wolf. Adam Schefter. Never heard of him before, but I swear to God, I hope, I don't hope, but I hope when that motherfucker dies, I hope everybody online writes, you know, ESPN author, who's also a dirtbag and said this horrible stuff about other people dying, you know, passed away. You know, what an asshole. Just to, even if you have someone in wrestling and you don't like, look, I said this the other day, and I know this sounds awful to say, but, you know, I thought about this stuff with Tammy. And I know me that if I was facing 10, 15 years in jail, that I, everything that I own is going to probably be taken away. I'm going to get sued. My life is over. My, my freedom is over. And I'm not going to have to go through this. I don't know if I could deal with it. I don't know if I would do something drastic. But even if you absolutely dislike someone in wrestling, you, know, you can't turn around. Oh, Hulk Hogan, 73 years old, who once called uh, uh, hip-hop artist the N-word, tragically dies in auto accident. You know, there's a place and there's not a place. And this asshole that did that earlier, oh, my God. What an awful, awful jerk-off. Steven Escalante, I love the name. It just sounds really, really Italian. So I don't know if you're Italian, but he's like, keep up the great work. Thank you very much, Steven. Much love. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Um, Gavin Death, another interesting name. A year ago, he would have said Walter versus Roman. Not now. His act is no longer intimidating. Yeah, well. I don't know if you're talking about Walter or Roman, but I will defend both. Roman is at the top of his game. Walter, what he did with Joe Alonzo yesterday was perfect. Walter, forget about what we got in NXT. The fact that they let Gunther do what he did yesterday, there is hope, everyone. Gunther is going to be a menace on SmackDown. The only question is, 
How far does he go? Do I think he could beat Ricochet for the champ for the title? Absolutely. I I will make a prediction. Gunther will have gold by August. I won't even say the end of the year. Anybody could say, oh, by 2023, he'll have gold. Gunther will have gold by August. Let's just hope it's not the 24-7 title. All right. We are at an hour and 40 minutes. I think we got through all the topics. Um, the results from Rampage yesterday, just to give them to you, Brian Danielson over Trent Beretta, which was a very good match. Uh, Willa Utah losing to John Moxley. We had Red Velvet uh, qualify for the Owen Hart tournament, beating Willow Nightingale and Swerve Strickland over QT Marshall. They did some more comedy with Hook and Danhausen. You know, I know a lot of people thought it was funny, you know, Danhausen in the garbage pail and eating the chips out of the garbage pail and all that, but you know why I thought the segment was so stupid? Because you got the female interviewer trying to interview Hook and Hook is eating potato chips and he's ignoring her. He's got earbuds in his ear. And she's like, Hook, you care to comment about this, this, and that? And he's just eating his chips. He's not paying attention to her. And I swear, during the watch party, you're like, hey, stupid. He's got fucking earbuds on. He can't hear you, moron. And I didn't see any bot call that out yesterday. I didn't see any bots ripping Rampage yesterday. It's weird. The bots were all out. They were having their batteries recharged. So stupid, man. I can't believe Tony. You know, look, do I expect Shad Khan to like pull his son aside and say, Tony, what the fuck are you doing? He's, come on, Tony, come on. You're better than that. Snap out of it. What are you, stupid? Don't do that. I don't see that happening, but again, the problem is when you have tens of thousands of fans online that will go along and praise and kiss ass for every little thing, he's going to feel. See, this is, this is where it gets dangerous, everyone. Tony Khan feels that his ideas and what he's doing for wrestling should be liked by every single person in the world. And you have to be crazy to not like it. And because he's got this mindset that everything he does is what every wrestling fan strives to want to see. And then you have this atmosphere online that reinforces that in his head that, oh, anybody that goes against it has either got to be jealous, a hater, a bot a paid bot or a human being paid to diss the company. Look at what I'm doing. I'm giving you, you know, ring of honor. I'm giving you Keith Lee. Look, I put Tony storm back on TV. We're celebrating Owen Hart. Sheeta is back. Thunder Rose is a champion. The fuck she done since she won that belt. Hey, look, we, what did we say about who was it that just debuted? Um, well, yeah, well, it was Tony Storm. Well, it's only been two weeks, but because she had a backstage segment, but you see, you see how many times she wrestles on, on Dynamite or Rampage in six weeks, once, twice, you know, wasn't this Christian's only third match in 2022? Wasn't this his first match? I think on Dynamite this past week, you know, oh my God, Christian's return is blown away edge. Now, listen, if anybody's going to be a dumb bot, with all due respect, you look at Edge versus Rollins in Saudi Arabia. You look at Edge and his work with AJ Styles, and you're going to look at uh, Christian over the last year hanging out with a, with a, a Lucha Walrus or with a, a, a dinosaur, you know, and doing some of the. And look, I love Christian, but you're really going to actually. Put, Put them said people did that. They put side by side Christian and Edge. Oh, Christian's had the much more illustrious career. 
Now, that's someone in who wants to be jerked off by somebody in AEW, or that's just somebody just trying to start shit. But, you know, Tony Khan acts like the bots only go one way. Trust me, I think every bot out there is bisexual. And I'm not making fun of sexuality. But, by, but bots don't care. They have no emotion. They don't care who is plugging them in, if you know what I mean. You know, bots just do whatever they're told. You know, and then turn around and it's, it's nuts, man. It's nuts. It's crazy. And you know what's sad about it? Take note of all of those podcasters and all of those sites that totally ignored it and instead is focusing on WWE using a Nazi name, which they really didn't use, but they almost did. But once they checked it and realized that it's not a good name, they went with something else. Well, we'll report it anyway. Uh, but we're going to get into my now Suzuki versus Samoa Joe. All right, everybody, I'm out of here. I hope you enjoyed tonight's show. Now, tomorrow night, I am back here again. Tomorrow night, I sit back with a blank piece of paper, and you, the extended family, you will feed me questions and comments all throughout the night. Super chats are not required. Presence is required. And I don't need presence like, oh, I... Oh, shit. I didn't, even, I didn't even realize I had this. Oh, I almost tore it up. By the way, um, somebody who went to WrestleMania 38, I mentioned this on the watch party yesterday, is sending me a whole bunch of WrestleMania 38 stuff to give away, like souvenir cups, souvenir, pro not used, but souvenir program, souvenir cups, some other stuff. I have no idea what I'm going to get. But when I get it, we'll do a contest or two. But uh, tomorrow, I will be here. And when I say presence required, I don't mean something for me to unwrap. I mean presence as here, you know, Bueller, Bueller, here, your presence is required. So, better heel prick. Steven Escalante is asking, better heel prick. Randy Orton or MJF? Um. See, I'm not throwing shade on MJF. MJF would not be able to say three quarters of what he says if he worked for a different promotion. MJF, I still think, would, would be creative enough to really piss people off. Randy Orton is a top, top, top heel. I mean, Randy Orton's also been around a couple of decades more than MJF. So if we compare careers, I mean, Orton blows him away. But I think as far as a young, if you want to compare Randy Orton at MJF's age, I go with MJF. I think MJF, you know, Randy Orton was always that smug, you just like were jealous. Like Randy Orton, in, young in his career, Randy Orton came off as the guy that if you went to a bar with your significant other, and Randy Orton happened to be in a bar also, that Randy Orton would literally go up to you and your girlfriend or wife or whatever, and Randy Orton would put his arm around her and say, hey, honey, let me buy you a drink. And then you want to say, like, the fuck are you doing? And Randy Orton would be like, and then you realize, oh, shit, I, I'll get my ass kicked. You know, like, I can't do nothing about it. I'm forced to sit there and take whatever happens. Um. Randy Orton always came across as that guy. That guy that would just make moves on your girl and you can't do nothing about it. MJF, though, he's someone that you just want to just smack the shit out of. And guess what? MJF, for his size, you probably have a better chance beating the shit out of MJF than you would Randy Orton. Not saying that MJF can't defend himself, but you see MJF as the character, you want to just strangle him with that scarf. Hey, how does that scarf taste? You know, what do you mean? I never had him, you know. If I were Chris, would I lay charges on Will? No. No. Uh, Will Smith is getting his ass handed to him. I honestly don't give a shit about the story. I don't. I don't. I don't care about politics. I don't care about Hollywood. I don't care about these elite people. 
I don't care. You know, I see someone like, uh, was it Shannon Sharp, you know, saying that as long as Trump isn't president, I'll pay $10 for gas. Yeah, that's because you're a millionaire. What about all the people that are tuning in right now that not only have to pay $5 gas, but their parents have to pay crazy amounts for their home heating bills. But meanwhile, these motherfuckers, they live in these, you know, extravagant multi-million dollar homes. I, I honestly care less about any of them anymore. I only care about me, my family, my friends, my fiance, and my hobbies, and you. That's it. No bullshit. There's no secret. Anyone else that disrespects the family, I could care less about. Anyone else out there that doesn't want to show us some respect back, I could care less about. Politics, mayors, presidents, I could care less about. I could, all I worry about is my inner circle and what I could do around my surroundings. I treat people that I don't know around me the way I would want to be treated in return. And that's it. That's it. I'm very selfish now. Okay. So, yeah, Yankees looking good. Mets looking good. I thought I had my Mets hat on tonight. So, but uh, maybe we'll talk a little baseball tomorrow. But listen, on the way out, if you enjoyed tonight's show, hit that like button. If you know anyone out there that you think would like the channel, let them know about the channel. I mean, every day that the shows are on, it's a different topic. Now, few of you did ask me the last day or two, am I going to return Wednesday night Dynamite next Wednesday? And honestly, my gut feeling right now says no. Um, and I'll tell you why. You know, I think there's no reason, since now the Q&A on Thursday is open for everyone and we do cover news as well, there's no reason why I can't cover a little bit of AEW on the Thursday show instead of Wednesday. Uh, there's no reason also, because Dynamite ends at 10 o'clock, why do I have to talk about it at 10.05? You know what I mean? Like, why can't we talk about it the next day? I mean, every podcast and their mother out there is out live at 10 o'clock right after Dynamite because they want to be first to tell everyone how awesome it was or Dynamite sucked. Dynamite sucked. Rampage will blow. Tony Khan is a fool. Vince McMahon is the bomb. You know, why do I have to do it five minutes after? And then by the time the show's over, it's midnight. By the time I edit and put everything online, it's 1, 1 30 in the morning. I'm not a cat. I can't just go like this and be, <laughs> I don't fall asleep till 3, 3 30 in the morning. I got to get up at 6 30. So why should I fuck my whole night up? Why? Do we get any, you know, respect or anything from AEW back? I don't need it but it's just that whole climb and it's like you know what yeah i'll talk about it at my leisure not at yours motherfuckers so i think next wednesday we will do patreon again which means tuesday will be a night off for me and then on thursday next week i will talk about anything that happens on dynamite so we will definitely dedicate and maybe the week after maybe we return to wednesday i definitely not ending wednesday night dynamite it's just for a couple of weeks, especially after just WrestleMania happening. You know, little break. You know what's weird about it? I kid you not. This channel has had an increase of 110% in the last 10 days. Yes, I know a lot of it had to do with Mania, but even with not doing a show Wednesday, the numbers are still through the roof. And I can't thank you all enough for the kind words for the WrestleMania coverage. You know, we had a fun night, night one, and we had, uh, you know, Soup and Kev Castle on. You know, night two ended up being a solo show, which was not my choice, but it was what it was. But, you know, it was a fun week, and, you know, I guess we're all trying to catch up a little bit. But I hope you can join me tomorrow. I'll be right here at 8 o'clock. It's to sit down with yours truly, and basically I'm going to just sit here and we're going to talk about whatever. So get your topics ready. Anything is on the table. You know me, I don't hide from nothing, and I don't avoid any questions. And we'll have a banger tomorrow night. So everyone, it's been real. You all have a great night. All the best. Stay safe. I hope to see you tomorrow night, 8.05.
p.m. Good night. As far back as I can remember, I always wanted to be a podcaster. For me to live any other way was nuts. To me, those goody-good people who work shitty jobs for bum paychecks and took the subway to work every day and worried about their bills were dead. I mean, they were suckers. They had no balls. If I wanted something, I just tuck it. I ran everything. I paid the bills. I paid the host. I even paid the masked maniac. Everybody had their hands out. Everything was for the taking. We always called each other good fellas. You would always hear from somebody. You're gonna like Don Tony. He's all right. He's a good fella. He's one of us. But if you're part of my crew, nobody ever tells you they're gonna get rid of you. It doesn't happen that way. There weren't any arguments or curses like in the movies. See, your haters come with smiles. They come as your friends, the people who've claimed they care the most for your life. And now, now that's all over. And that's the best part. Today everything is different. There's lots of action. I don't have to wait around for everything like everyone else. Oh, I didn't get the vaccine? Fuck you, vaccine me. Oh, your delivery guy has COVID? Fuck you, feed me. Right after I moved here, I ordered egg noodles and ketchup, and I got spaghetti with meat sauce. I'm no longer an average nobody, while they get to live the rest of their lives like a bunch of schnooks.